Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. These shows are brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, we've got a really interesting show today. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, really interesting from our point of view. It's, it's pretty sad, too, um, in, in the way that we've got some women who've lost daughters. Mm -hmm. However, the exciting part about it for me is always how people have transcended their loss. Absolutely. And the three women today on our show absolutely have. They are lifelines for people that are not as far down the road. And I think this will be a really hopeful show for people out there. Yeah, I do too. It's going to be fantastic. Heidi, I know one of the things that you talk about is the fact that the, the, your only brother, Right. I have three daughters and only we only had one boy, so how that is to lose the one person in your family of that sex. Right, absolutely. So the, the women that we have on today have lost their only daughter, um, and two of them have surviving sons and one doesn't have any surviving children. So what is it like, like you said, because people will ask me all the time, do you have any brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. You know, and I have two sisters and I, and I have a brother that is now dead, but you know, it, it comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting when you've lost the only, the only boy mm -hmm. or the only girl. Mm -hmm. Well, we, as I said, we've got some great guests. Heidi, yes. can you introduce them? Yes, I would love to. Um, and all of them have been on our show before, so that's a great thing. So you can go to Open to Hope and look at other shows they've done. Um, right here next to you, Mom, we have uh, Varda Wendriff, and Varda is a Compassionate Friends chapter leader mm -hmm. uh, in Staten Island. And we love her. We see her at all the Compassionate Friends stuff with her <laughs> yes. husband, Artie. And she actually won a chapter leader award at the national conference. What was it, a couple of years ago? Yes. She and Michelle. I should introduce yeah, them as a team. Right. As a team. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's right. too weird to introduce them right. separate. They're like sisters, okay? Right. So <laughs> Michelle Muro and Varda Wendriff, they are both chapter leaders together, together in right. Staten Island. They do a fabulous job. They have a very big chapter. They have between 30 and 60 members that go to the Compassionate Friends National Conference every year. Amazing. And their husbands are That's amazing. They are. Uh, Arnie and Babe, they're the, fabulous. The Staten Island, I have to tell you the truth, the Staten Island chapter is like my favorite. I'm sorry, I have a favorite. Yes, <laughs> I do. Um, I love Staten Island. So, do you uh, remember how you met them? I do. I met them in 2002 when I was trying to get, um, I was doing my doctoral dissertation. We were in Salt Lake City, Utah, mm -hmm. and my committee told me there is no way you're going to be able mm -hmm. to get. You can't do it on sibling loss. No, and you're not no. going to be able to get bereaved families that have been bereaved within the first two years for your sample. No one's yeah. going to do it. And I went up to these two and Babe, I'll never forget, and I said, I need to get families that I'm going to work with for my doctoral dissertation in psychology on the sudden death of a sibling, and you all looked at me and said, we have them, right. we definitely have them, and you gave me all my families within 20 seconds, and my committee <laughs> almost fainted. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. Um, so they both won the chapter, let's see, what was it, the Compassionate Friends Chapter, chapter Leadership Award. Award, was that right. what it was called? And I gave it to them, and it was fabulous. They're amazing, and they, they really, really deserved it because of everything they've done at the Compassionate Friends, and they do, they do a lot for brief families. Right. So, and they both are bereaved moms, mm -hmm. Lauren and Lori, which mm -hmm. is so interesting that they're almost the similar names, both died right. in car accidents mm -hmm. and both were in their 20s. Mm -hmm. and both well, buried well, in the same nice. cemetery. Are oh you gosh. kidding? And both yeah. have, we need not walk alone in there. No, I'm sorry, the wind beneath my uh, the wind beneath, beneath my wings. wings. I'm sorry. Oh it's my God! On their, the, on their uh, stone. And you didn't so know each other. We didn't know each other. That's so crazy. Is She's my closest. Really, <laughs> That's crazy. That is bizarre, and it that is, is very amazing. Bizarre. That gives me chills. Yep. That's fabulous. <laughs> and then next to them is Denise Ganulin, who will be singing on our show. That's where you'll always be at the end of the show. And Denise is also a brave mom, and she lost her only mm -hmm. daughter Holland mm -hmm. at 38 years old, and she died in the hospital, right? Sepsis. Mm -hmm. Yes, and sepsis. sepsis is what? Is it? It's a infection. full body infection. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and she got that in the hospital or after? She got it in the hospital, but she died after she got home. Okay, wow. horrible. Mm -hmm. And she's a beautiful, you'll be seeing pictures of all of their daughters on here. And Denise has a couple of little grandkids too. Yes, Holland left some, a couple of grandkids Two as a babies. gift. The gifts that keep on giving. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, and Holland was your only child. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Denise is a singer-songwriter, and she's lived in Nashville, and she is now in California in San Diego, one of my favorite places. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then next to her is Heather Stang, 
who... Hey, uh, Heather. Yes, hey, hi, Heather. Heather. I, we work with Heather. Yep, she works with Treasury Assistance Program for the military with us. Yep, in the, with TAPS and uh, with military families. She has a meditation center in Maryland, mm -hmm. and she has a new book out that is called, help me out, Heather. Mindfulness it's, and Grief, and it's actually the second edition of the book with mm -hmm. some updates. Mindfulness and Grief, yes, and she so. is a certified yoga therapist, mm -hmm. which I love, and she's got a master's degree in thanatology. Yep, and so. thanatology is in healing grief and loss, right? Yeah. And she also has a podcast. That yeah, is true. So. And she will be our expert today yep. as we talk with these three bereaved moms. Okay, all right. So. so, ladies, I wonder, do you have the same situation I do where people ask about a child loss and ask you, oh, don't you have any girls or whatever? Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you deal with it? As far as having um, lost our, my daughter, um, it, it's very, I, first of all, I want to say that my son is sitting here, so I'm very blessed. And every time I think of having lost Lauren, I also always think that I'm blessed to have another mm -hmm. uh, child. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, um, Having lost a daughter, I think, um, kind of makes me feel that I'm missing something. Um, I'm missing something. I'm missing things like, um, I don't know, like e the things that you two have. I, you know, I want right. you, the two of you uh, talk to each other and, and, and love each other. And, and so I miss that part of it. Um, and, and we banter back and forth because there is a mother-daughter dynamic that's different than a mother-son dynamic. Exactly, yeah. but, but they're, they're different exactly, yes. and so so I miss that banter and yeah. I miss that. And, and Lauren sometimes gave me a hard time. Yeah, uh, that's part of the mother-daughter uh, dynamic. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I, I was—they so, don't I, mind telling you the way it is, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, mom. And I was always—I knew that 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 nonsense was going to stop after a while, yeah. but and so I was waiting for it. And yeah. because it's not here, then it makes me feel really mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. understandable. Mm. Well, what about you? It's Michelle? very lonely. Yeah, it's very lonely. You know. Even if you're in a restaurant, you see a, a mother and a daughter mm -hmm. sitting together. It's hard, because it probably it's brings hard. up, okay, this is what I'm missing, right. and this is what I, it, it, that's the thing about grief and loss. You grieve not only for what you lost, but for the future that you no longer have. Right. Mm -hmm. So like exactly. you said, when you see things, it's like when I see people with b brothers, right. and I'm like, wow, this is, this is what I'm missing, right. Right. you know? And I'm also thinking about the um, daughter-in-law, too. Mm -hmm. I think about that when I when oh, I oh that you're gonna Scott's yeah not gonna I, mean, have I don't a, get to have a daughter-in-law daughter you're right you know right. yeah well so. we're, I think we're lucky that we do have wonderful daughters-in-law so mm -hmm. I, you know in that way so okay that's yeah. yeah and and what about you Denise because you lost your only child right yeah I, and I was the only girl to my mom okay so I had a close relationship with her mm -hmm. and then of course you hope to have that now with your own daughter, which is fine, and so I, I, I miss it a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I watch the same thing, right, the dynamics, right, right. like from both ends. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I miss my mom and I miss my daughter. But yeah. one thing I notice is, you know, the first thing people will ask me, one of the first things mm -hmm. is, do you have other children? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that makes right. a difference. Right. Like the right. I don't think it does. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I always say, no, I don't. But, you know, right. if I did, I don't think it would make a difference. You know? yeah. but, well, well, I think you're bringing up a good point because nobody's going to replace your daughter, Holland. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And mm -mm. another child is not Holland. That's mm -hmm. right. That's a different person. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there was only one Lauren, Lori, and Holland. Right. And right. Scott. Right. There's only right. one. Yep. And, and so, it doesn't matter if it was a girl or a boy. Right, right. Yeah. Your yeah. child. Right. No one replaces right. your yeah. child. Right. And right. those relationships you had. I mean, I had a really close relationship with Scott, and he was mm -hmm. a real huggy kid. And, mm -hmm. you know, I missed all those guy hugs. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely, right. and, and you miss the craziness too, right? right? You say like you miss the, <laughs> right. those wonderful times. Of the, right. I, I miss the crazy. There was a lot of crazy. Times. <laughs> yeah. and I, I miss that. Right. I miss the craziness. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and Heather, what are your thoughts about what you're hearing today? Because you've worked with so many grieving families in your career and, and do every day. Yeah, and grew up in, in a grieving family too, yes. where both both sides had lost um, children. And so, so you, you know, had a, your parents had a, my, an uncle that committed suicide yeah, when and, you were eight or something. Yes, when I was young. So both of my, I would say both of my grandparents' sets had lost a child. Mm -hmm. Both my parents had lost a sibling, um, and and what I'm hearing here is is heartful and and hopeful because it's about honoring that memory, 
Mm -hmm. um, recognizing that sometimes people might ask that very unskillful question mm -hmm. um, and being able mm -hmm. to say their name mm -hmm. and to weave the memory of your child you know into the into your life as it goes forward while also acknowledging the the secondary losses that come with it mm -hmm. like you're saying about the the daughter-in-law or the son-in-law that that's interesting yeah. secondary yeah. losses. I like that too. Yeah. Uh, that's really right. yeah. that kind mm -hmm. of I don't know about you guys, but compartmentalizing is part of what I find is helpful. And I like the idea of the word secondary right. well, loss. When you think about it, when we when you have when you have a death, there it, it's you know over your life's course you miss different things. Like okay, the day they were going to get married, right. Helen, Helen right. got married, but we we right. don't have that. Right. And then we don't have them having grandkids. I know Helen had two, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have you know there's different things you I miss. Call them branches. Right. right. Right, yeah, and, and as right. and as you age, I mean, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying, and you all know this: a daughter's a, da a daughter's a daughter all her life, but a son is a son until he takes a wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't necessarily yeah. agree with some of that, yeah. right. but you know, there's a myth out there that maybe the daughters will stay closer or, or help with the parents as they get older. But I was thinking about that too. Well, who's going to take care of me? You know, if if God forbid something happens, and so I mean, uh, it would be just. I, I don't know. Just it's a very difficult thing to, to even mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. put your head around uh, the idea of what's going to happen later on, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and all the things that we missed, like you said, her getting married, mm -hmm. walking down the aisle, mm -hmm. um, having uh, having yeah, kids, right? Or having possibly having if kids, she did, yeah. Or I, I mean, all those things. Um, going shopping with her, talking about uh, girl stuff. Exactly. Talking <laughs> I mean, because right. you know, right. at the end going of the day, shopping with her. That's yes. that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, buying it, it shoes with her. Silly, right? <laughs> uh, well, I, I even worry that that my son will be alone. Right. Yeah, well, he won't have. Yeah. Now he's he's not going to be an uncle. Right. You know, really there's so point. many things yeah. that he won't have yeah. that. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I just wanted to fix. I'm the mother. Right. I have yeah. to fix it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? right. And right. it's yeah. so helpless. It's, right. Yeah. That, that's a good point. And for you, your grandkids not having a mom. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and a thinking, real... I'm sure for you, that's really, that's really that's no, really hard. That's to horrible. See these little babies that didn't ha are growing up with. But you're a mom. keeping her memory alive. Yeah. For she. Them. They were one and two, so mm -hmm. they don't have any yeah. recollection. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, every chance I can get. <laughs> well, say I something. love that you're singing on this show, and Thank you're you. singing on some of our other shows, and you sing at the Compassionate Friends, because it, it, it the lyrics and the things that you sing about will make them know your daughter also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I you hope know. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, a beautiful thing. Thank you. So, talk about the song you're going to sing on the show to, when we close the show. That's I, where you'll always be. That's where you'll always be. Is a, it, it? I wrote it actually last year for the Compassionate Friends. But the song is, I write to her and I sing to her. Mm -hmm. So when I say you, I'm singing to her. But it's a song about you'll always be in you know my mind, in my heart, mm -hmm. and in every memory that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what it's mm -hmm. it's about. And uh, it's helped me a lot because A, she liked music and she always encouraged me to do it, but, uh, but I think she'd be pretty happy about now <laughs> that I'm doing it. And other parents uh -huh. will say to me that they mm -hmm. get it. So Now, how long has it been for you? 20 years. And how long has it 20 been? 20 years. And how long Just five okay. for me. So you're mm -hmm. seeing two people who are really a little further down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, it's strangely, uh, people, th I'm surprised when I say something li like this, but five years is not a long time. Mm -hmm. no. 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 In the no, grieving process, <laughs> you're, pre you're pretty early. You're mm -hmm. pretty courageous, wouldn't Definitely. you say? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, time takes on a different relevance, and mm -hmm. I'm sure Heather can attest to this too. Because, you know, when you have a child, you you think that you're going, they're going to outlive you. Absolutely. You think they'll be. You, you don't ever think you're going to bury your child. So the idea of them, of you living any part of your life without them, mm -hmm. just is very surreal and right. strange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on what I mean, we've been talking about? You know, we often say that grief shatters our assumptive world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one of the big assumptions that we make is that our children will mm -hmm. be there. Right. Mm -hmm. like you said will outlive us. And when anyone in your family system or friend system dies, your your world is changed and we're so often caught off guard even if the illness is diagnosed. But when it's your child, it's its, its own special kind of pain because mm -hmm. of that. 
-hmm. assumption, like you know, like I think there uh, is also a lot of guilt and shame. Oh, yeah, sure. that's, that's particularly mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. on, you know, mm -hmm. in the. Well, well I'm thinking know. parents. I remember mm -hmm. when my mom first told me that my brother died over the phone. It was in the middle of the night, of course. The, we always get these calls in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And she kept apologizing to me. She doesn't remember mm -hmm. this, but she mm -hmm. was crying mm -hmm. very, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Well, they weren't even in the same state. Right. He died in a car accident. But right. she's, and I go, Mom, why are you apologizing? Mm -hmm. And she said, because I was his mother, I said mm -hmm. I should have been there and saved him. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's exactly. this idea as a right. parent right. That, that you should have done something. Exactly. Even, yeah. even though we all That's know, right. if you right. could have done something, you would have, and mm -hmm. they would all be here. I see that a lot, mm -hmm. and one of the practices that I offer up parents in that position where they're like blaming themselves right. is to think of a, another parent. You know, like you could think of your friend in that same situation. Would you see her mm -hmm. in the way you're seeing yourself? Mm -hmm. That's why I think groups like Compassionate Friends I are like so that. incredibly helpful is because you can look at a parent with the same type of loss and be like, oh no, she did everything she could. Mm -hmm. And so can you reflect that back to you? Mm -hmm. I like that. I like yeah. That. yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, Varda, if mm -hmm. you um, could give some advice to somebody who's early on in their grief, what would it be? Well, it would be to seek out the compassionate friends and find someone with whom you can really talk and, uh, and share your feelings. Uh, I think people, mm -hmm. compassionate friends people are the ones who really know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody says, oh, I know how you feel, and they haven't lost a child, they really don't know how you feel. So I think seek out someone uh, mm -hmm. who, who has had the same experience as you and mm -hmm. share and talk about it. Yeah, it's hard to know another's pain. I mean, right. you can empathize with right. them and s sympathize with them to, to really know the depth of their pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you don't want them to know. Oh, no. Uh, right. It's right. really, right. really a strong, a strong thing. As, as leaders, though, we see the difference between people who come mm -hmm. into our group the very first weeks or whatever it is, mm -hmm. They have absolutely, they're distraught, they're overwhelmed, but if they keep, continue to come to our meetings, we can see the difference in, in them. So and you suggest that people come three times, right? I mean, try No, at least three times. Because the first time can be pretty right. so It's overwhelming. Yes. I mean, everybody says, I think, I'm never coming back. Yes. Yeah, exactly. No, the first time you're right. not coming back because, coming because back. you don't want to hear I don't other wanna people. Be, I don't right. want to be part of this group. Exactly. And it makes it real all over again. Exactly. It's like, wait a minute, I'm in this group? Ew. Yeah. Exactly. I lost my brother. Wait, I did? It's like you keep revisiting the story right. and not believing that it's attached to you. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the major, well, you can talk about this, Heather, but one of the major things is telling your story, right? Absolutely. Talk about that a little bit. So, you know, telling our story helps us rebuild that shattered world. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's like you're reading this novel and suddenly someone ripped off the second, you know, half of the book, but it's far more painful than that. And so telling your story starts to weave the memory into your new story. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to rebind that book back together. And having someone just sit and hear you, mm -hmm. you know, again, hearing their name, hearing how important they were, that's healing. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I think all grief professionals, if you will, can agree on, and we have many differences, is the importance of being, feeling connected to a group of people who are similar to you, to mm -hmm. that community. And part of that mm -hmm. is telling your story. It's so primal. Yeah. Like well, that. Denise, I wanted to talk to you a little bit because you stopped writing and singing. I did. And mm -hmm. Alan Peterson has helped you to move into that. Our friend mm -hmm. Alan from Compassionate That's Friends. Right. Wow. That's right. To re-recording and doing your music. I didn't know about TCF. I didn't know it existed. I was mm -hmm. like three years into my mm -hmm. grief. My friends were tired of hearing anything I had to say, mm -hmm. including my family right. and stuff. And uh, I, I wrote a song for somebody local, just, uh, they were having an event, and I, you'll hear that in one of the shows, but called What a Party, about what if the doors opened and all, all the angels came in, for, <laughs> it was for a bunch of people. And uh, I had that song, and I just thought, I'm just, just gonna send it. I looked online, grief groups, to compassionate friends, maybe they can use it. For, mm -hmm. They had an upcoming right. conference. This was last year. <laughs> so and Alan nice. Peterson called me on the right. phone and he said, I want you to come and sing that song. At the, I said, I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a singer, I just write. And he said, no, you're gonna come sing because you're uh, a bereaved parent and they'll get what you're saying. You're gonna be in a room full of friends. You get up and you sing that. And could you write a couple more before you come? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and Sounds I like Alan. <laughs> I felt like, you know, Alan's like right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did, I wrote two more songs. Wow. 
Wow. And one is That's Where You'll Always Be. Yes. And I sang them at the conference, and I've been writing like a crazy person wow. ever since. That is so <laughs> healing. Because of Alan. You know, he said, right. you've got to keep writing. It's going to help you. It's going to help Be others. Because it there. helped him when Ashley died. Right. And he right. was right. Yeah. yeah. And my daughter's last name was Ashley. Oh, that's so yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All these coincidences. That's that's right. Right. I think we, sk I think we skipped right. over Michelle, didn't we? Did we skip over you? Yep. Yeah. Give us your tip. <laughs> For me, and I think it keeps Lori in my life. I'm busy with my daughter all the time. Mm -hmm. I cannot live with her out of my life yeah. and going to meetings and the things that we do we're constantly working with things with Lori yeah. mm -hmm. so um, I could never even if we weren't co-leaders right. I would go forever mm -hmm. I, I think keeping them part of your life mm -hmm. and I love the necklace so you have on it is gorgeous and that's mm -hmm. that's Lori's picture with the picture yes. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, being on the show today it's been absolutely fantastic okay. you're wonderful women and yes and Me thank too. you, Heather, for thank coming you. in. And, and, and it's interesting thank to have you. all these moms here because I feel a level of emotion that I don't usually feel, and I think it's because you're all together and so connected. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So thanks again for being on the show. Thank you. And we're going to hear you sing out of the show. You are going to be singing Where You'll Always Be. And we want to thank everybody for watching the show today, and we want hope you'll tell everyone about Open to Hope and about the show. and. Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own, and God bless. How do I say goodbye to you? How do I let you go? When I don't want to, I still feel you in my arms, so close to me. That's where you'll always be. I still hear you laugh out loud. I try to see your face in every crowd. I will hold you in my heart constantly that's where you'll always be what do I do when nothing in this world feels right and every day is darker than the darkest night I wonder what you would have been and what I'd give to see you again one more time. Just one more time. It's so hard to get through the pain. I try to live my life, but it's not the same. I will keep you in every sweet memory. That's where you'll always be. I wonder what you would have been and oh what I give to see you again one more time just one more time how do I say goodbye to you how do I let you go when I don't want to I still feel you in my arms so close to me and that's where you'll always be.